Binary Jazz. Uh, this right. is a show where, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's a train wreck show where we uh, talk about things that we don't know anything about, which is uh, pretty much. God, what we it's do. so on brand, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much what we do normally. Um, I'm joined as always. I, I am Chris Jazz Sequence on the internet. I'm joined as always by Gary, who's Binary Gary on the internet. That's the direction my thumb is pointing. Uh, and also the, Allison. Your, your thumb was pointing to the internet? Yes. <laughs> and also Allison Plus, who is uh, Allison, Allison in real life. <laughs> I am, I'm really excited exist, to see. I exist more on the internet than in real life, so. I, I'm really I, excited I didn't to mean see to that. assume, but that is not true. correct. <laughs> it's been a, uh, I don't know. I guess it's only been a couple weeks, but Gary, I have a my question. world has been. A... I have yeah, a question about it. your current background. Uh, yeah. My question is: Is that directly behind you, a curtain, or a sheet placed over a curtain rod? Uh. It, well, there's nothing behind it except for a wall. Does that answer the question? <laughs> <laughs> that answers a different question. Okay. That's a whole new uh, question. I don't think it's a sheet, though, because it came with, like, the the curtain hole up top. But it's... Okay, so it's, it's I mean, a it's, curtain. It is a curtain rod on a wall, but... It is a curtain. Yeah. That There's is, no window behind that you. That is blocking nothing. Yeah, it's decorative, because this is a big empty wall. We wanted something nice up there, and Rhonda said we should put up a tapestry, but instead we put that up. <laughs> I think I'm still vision I'm envisioning you in your other space so I'm assuming there's like a window or something and then yeah I need to yeah, adjust this is, I'm in the living room so this is not a view anybody gets really except for Emma. you uh, but th this is the light we turn on when we watch TV at night and, and what color the... uh, what color do you turn it on for TV watching oh it's, it varies it's it's constantly different is it does it you know? depend on the show that you're watching it really depends on my mood, how the day's been, just the kind of lighting I need. I, I probably turn the light on before I figure out what show we're watching. Um, so this is this is the fancy, as we were saying before we started, why not give the LED light bulbs Wi-Fi uh, and the ability to change color? Let them be so better. I distinctly remember you yeah. uh, being uh, a little uncomfortable with uh, Google. Yeah. Uh, home devices yep um yeah, now i own two but now you're using google home yeah it's a it's a weird thing so the app that came with this is actually creepier than using google the google app because it's this funky chinese thing so i actually feel safer passing it through google and use it and google hit their api i'm assuming that's how i have no idea how it works I, maybe it has a microphone or spine on me. No, I hope just, this yeah. podcast episode is helpful for the time capsule once the light bulb robots take over. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this will be one for the ages. Well, um, it'll be like one here. I went to a, I went to a Google Assistant uh, talk at Open West the last time there that existed. Um, yeah. So I, I yeah, it, it does hit an API. Um, that, of that, I am I am aware. It's just what they do with the data after it hits the API is. Oh, and I'm sure it has GPS coordinates and all sorts of crazy data that it doesn't need. And there's another one. We have a light out by the street that's freaking adorable. Um, and so I, I like turning that one on uh, in the evening and setting it to different colors for often no reason. Well, um, my son's 15th birthday was last week. Yes. And wow. Yeah. And <laughs> a decade his, and a half. He is, he is uh, as a class, so we do this thing called My Tech High. I think I've talked about it before, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, it's, it's sort of like for homeschoolers, um, and they'll give you essentially state school funding to help you buy supplies and shit. Um, so for his class, 
uh, for one of his classes, his tech class, he wants to he wanted to build a computer, learn how to build a computer. So nice. he's plotted out. He's spent the last several months like plotting out what he wants to build, uh, where he's going to get it, and all that sort of stuff. And one of the things uh, that he wanted, and he wants to make it a gaming computer because you know that's right. what you do. Uh, and so on his list were like gaming keyboard and gaming mouse. So, um, and that was also on his birthday list, so he wouldn't have to buy them because they're expensive and yada, yada, yada. So I got him a gaming keyboard and a gaming mouse, not the ones that were on his list, but other ones that were good. Um, and so now his keyboard is of the sort, first of all, it's like the crazy mechanical keyboard that has like super clacky keys. Mm. Uh, I hate it because I can now like, I'm so used to the softer keys and the shallower keys that like I can barely type on his keyboard. Like I have to remember, like when I used to type on that in typing class, I had to like slam my hands on the on the keys. Um, so so that's a thing. Uh, but it is of the type that has like the LED backlight uh, in various different colors. And since it's primarily designed for Windows and not Mac, and he hasn't built his computer yet, he can't change the the um, the he can't program the LEDs. So all it does is just rotate. It cycles through a yeah. rainbow constantly all the time his keyboard is cycling through a rainbow. Uh, so that's a thing. Uh, and yeah. It made me wonder if your LED can also cycle through the rainbow of colors. Uh, not unless I write some code to do it and hit the API endpoint. So um, Google actually has like, here's a palette of maybe, you know, 30 colors. But the sketchy Chinese app that it came with is like, you can specify all the parameters. Mm. So I guess if I were to write for their API, I could make it do all sorts of wacky things. Thanks, Chris. Now I'm going to need to figure that out. Um, his, <laughs> his mouse, his mouse also glows as well. It's got oh. an LED inside the mouse that glows green. So we've got the glowing rotating color yeah. keyboard. We have the green light from his mouse. Those are on constantly. We also have a, like a charging station for his switch controllers that glows green or red, depending on their charge. We have the bl little blue backlight from the uh, 3d printer screen that that's always on. We've got a couple like uh, wall outlets that like glow green to show that they are active. So like our, our living room, uh, front room, whatever, like when the lights are out, it's got a lot of light going on. I was going to say, you don't saying, even need to turn on the regular light. Right. <laughs> yeah. The LED robot overlords will feel comfortable in your living room already. Yeah. yeah so the, so yeah. the only thing that we need now is the Wi-Fi enabled uh, light bulbs so that we can just like have those on and have those doing crazy colors. Just have like a, like, yeah. like a disco in the front room. It'd be awesome. I, uh, I, we have a few glowy things in the living room, but not many. This, this bulb is sort of center stage. <laughs> you don't want to make it in too busy. Yeah, I don't want to overshadow the flowers behind me. I'm only like half joking about the, about LED lights in that room too, because I, I, I think it would be actually kind of cool. Um, and you need like accompanying music. It's a whole I thing. Mean, that, that's, that's, that's the reason because that's the rabbit hole right there that I want to <laughs> go down. It's like, like thinking about it in my head, like, and then I could like DJ and I could have the lights like sync up with the, you know. yeah. Did you see, there was um, a video floating around a while ago where someone had programmed their lighting to match the main colors of the thing that they were watching. So if it was more like warm tones, then the lights would go warm. They did it with Nightmare Before Christmas, so obviously I was like, oh, I'm here for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I'm thinking about more things like, you know, I don't know how effective that is if I'm watching Austin Powers or something. I, you know, like there's got to be like, there's some movies where it's not useful, but I prefer Nightmare Before Christmas. But maybe it would make some movies better. <laughs> yeah. What did we watch the other day? Uh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. You remember that movie from I, I don't know eighties? Um, that's oh, I'm getting it confused with Tough Guys. Why am I getting it confused with Tough Guys? I don't know. I, don't I do know. remember yeah. that movie. Wait, that was Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Uh, Steve Martin. Yes. As yeah, okay. As like like a con artist. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's all I have to say about that. Very different, very different movie than Tough Guys. Very different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we started talking about LED, and I, I forgot that I can adjust the LEDs on my uh, keyboard, like on this laptop, which is a silly, like, who cares thing. I wonder if I can turn them off. Yeah, Someone out off. there cares. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Apparently, you I, need uh, the backlit uh, lights on your keyboard to to play games. I didn't know that when I played games, but you know, apparently that's a that's a requirement. Also, you need like the mechanical keyboard to play games because I don't know. How else will everyone keyboard. else in your household know that you're playing? Know that you're doing something. Actually, yeah. I have two mechanical keyboards, and my third is in the way. Um, <laughs> I had a clacky one, and I'm like, ah, and it didn't really make my life any better. Um, but then I tried like one that was a lot quieter and a lot lighter and like the, the key action is different. And I really find that my wrists don't hurt with that. Um, so that's nice. I like it. And the new one I have is like an ergonomic. Mm. It's the same, the same switches. So it should be same quiet, nothing crazy. Um, yeah, I don't get the big clacking part. I don't need that in my life. I can see myself liking it, um, but I also work approximately two and a half feet away from Robin, so I feel like for everyone's sanity, <laughs> we should just put a put a tour in. <laughs> I uh, I really liked the um, the Mac Bluetooth keyboard, but I, it doesn't work so hot as a Bluetooth keyboard on Linux. I mean, I'm sure I could spend some time, like, maybe making the experience better, but I don't. It, it doesn't excite me. So, it doesn't yeah, work too hot. That implies that it does work to some degree. Yeah, it does. Um, I there are some keys that just don't do anything. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember. It, it was like modifiers, control, shift, option. I don't remember what the deal was. I don't think I could remap them, and I think they only worked on one side of the keyboard. Um. So I'm, I'm sure that I could have figured out how to make it do something else, but you know, if you pair a Apple Bluetooth keyboard with an with a Mac, it's like, oh, this is cool. I mean, heck, even if you pair one with like an iPad, it's it's surprisingly useful. Mm -hmm. So typically on this show, we have a topic, but before the topic, Gary's stock pick. Stock pick. You should definitely not buy <laughs> is Gary IBM. Stock pick, is, is the Gary Stock Pick uh, section always going to be stuff that we, sh we shouldn't buy? That's my plan, yep. Okay, so I'm not should... buying IBM this week. IBM. <laughs> That's it. That's what I'm not buying this week. <laughs> What's Gary not buying? Yeah. It could be stocks. It could be anything. Yeah, Gary's not buying socks this week. <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I'm going to be like, wait, I need more socks. No, that'll, that'll be an embarrassment. I'll come on next week and be like, well, I said I'm, I wasn't buying socks last week, but I was wrong. My mistake. <laughs> uh, uh, well, before we get into this, the, the, uh, the topic, uh, I will share a thing that, that we just recently discovered on Netflix. Uh, I don't know why yeah. it was recommended. Probably is new on Netflix, and that's why generally what it was recommended. But uh, – it might have to do with our uh, viewing history. Um, we were recommended Indian Matchmaker. Uh, I was also recommended that. And I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard mixed reviews. <laughs> um, we are kind of hooked on Indian Matchmaker. It's a really stupid reality show. I mean, it's like, it's of the genre stupid reality shows. Um, and I imagine, although I've never actually watched The Bachelor, that there's a lot of similarities with The Bachelor, sort of. Um, but, um, but like, because Indian matchmaking is a thing, and it's like such a unique cultural thing, like arranged marriages and the, the, the role of a matchmaker in relationships, uh, it's such a sort of a unique cultural thing. Um, and because we at least have an interest uh, or for whatever reason, uh, for varying reasons between the two of us um, in, in Indian history, culture, and whatever. Uh, it, it, uh, it's interesting in, in that to see sort of uh, how that plays out. And it's really fascinating and sometimes really bizarre. At the same time, uh, the realization that I had after watching three episodes uh, so before we, so yeah, the other day, um, is that if I was not already married, um, 
and I was doing like online dating or something, the concept of so a person like the matchmaker whose job it is, is to like look at each individual and try to align interests and goals and ideals and like what you're looking for in a partner um, and who, that's their job. That sounds a lot better than the mess that is online dating. Than swiping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like also How? trusting yourself to make those decisions when you yourself might not know really what you want, but somebody with an outside perspective might have a better understanding of like, and also through having done this many, many times, might have a better understanding of what you need, even if that's not a thing that you have articulated to yourself. It's just an interesting mm -hmm. concept. Um, I like what would that service cost if it were an actual service? I imagine it cost a fuck ton of money um, okay. because uh, she is always shown like flying out to all of her different clients and she lives in India but she's flying to Houston and she's flying to New York and she's flying to Chicago and she's flying to you know Mumbai and like she's, she's going all over um, oh and she's got wow. lots of clients. Um, so like, this is like Indian- It's not a part-time gig. Yeah. yeah, this is like Indian royalty in terms of like her economic status in India. Um, uh, and I imagine- That's that, wild. Yeah, I imagine it's not cheap. Um, and also all of, all of her clients are very, very, very well off. Um, one of, like they're lawyers, they are doctors, they are like uh, radio personalities. Um, yeah, they they've got they've got the cash. Wow. And like the 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 one person that's on the show, at least as of episode four, uh, who's the uh, who's her client, um, her one client that they're showing in India, um, he's like a jewelry designer, like designing like this like really amazing like gold and diamond like jewelry, and like he's from like a obviously well off uh, Indian family, and um, so like he's also got and he's like like a total like playboy yeah so indian matchmaker is uh is the, the netflix pick of the week i feel fortunate to have gotten married through before it. like online dating was a, a thing yeah if it wasn't for college uh I guess where, where I guess college like, was like the online dating thing. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> like for people who don't go, like, um, like Aaron's sister never went to college. She uh, took a break after high school. She did AmeriCorps for a couple years. Uh, she came back and was like, I don't really want to do college. Um, and for her, it's been really difficult to meet people uh, because college is kind of where you meet people. And when you're not in a space like that. Um, it's a lot harder to make those connections between people outside of like work and you don't want to date someone that you work with, but that's mm -hmm. who you're seeing all the time. And then how do yeah. you meet anyone else? I mean, you know, like I, I, when I, in San Francisco, I, there's a large group of, of people that I was, you know, went to hang out with and parties with and whatever. Uh, and it, if I did not end up getting in a relationship with Aaron and did end up moving back to the Bay area, probably that's the circle of people that I would be hanging out with in uh, probably the circle of people I would, I would be like, that's the dating pool right there. Um, and I don't know that that would be better. Uh, I was, I, I don't know that I would be a better person for being in that particular <laughs> circle of individuals. Sure. Sure. That's fair. alternate timeline, Chris. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that version of Chris is, is a very, very different version that I'm, I'm glad I'm on this side of, of like in this timeline, Chris. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Not about you, but you know, <laughs> let's, let's just get to the topic. Let's get to the topic, Be, like before the whole episode goes by. ADD. <laughs> the Talking topic for this week is cabotage. Ca cabotage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, it's a, uh, round leafy vegetable. 
I hope you all know you can always count on me for saying the, like the most obvious dumb answer first. Well, it's always food related, which I appreciate. <laughs> yeah, I'm always hungry. <laughs> I was hungry before we sat down to do this, and then I was like, I think I've de- developed some sort of Pavlovian. I think so too. At this point, <laughs> I see the two of you, and I'm like, hey, let's talk about food. <laughs> let's, let's eat, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you spell yeah. it for me? I'm, I, yeah, I, was, I think I know how it's spelled, but I might. It's C A B O T A B E. Cabotage. So it really is spelled like sabotage with cab in front. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, well, just, I think that's, that's a perfect that, spot. Obviously, for that's where my talk. brain's going, right? So, well, no, yeah, my brain so, was I, all of a sudden I'm walking around my house singing Beastie Boys, but I'm replacing the lyrics. Yeah, and it's yeah. Cabotage. My partner thinks I'm nuts. Um, <laughs> so, so cabotage <laughs> is is when you uh, when you hire a taxi <laughs> and uh, you send them, but you tell them. It's when you, you call in for a taxi or maybe, or I guess it would work for an Uber or a Lyft or something, but you send them somewhere where it is not possible to physically go, but where Google Maps or Waze or whatever might accidentally send them, like in the middle of a river or into a lake or over a cliff or something. That is cabotage. Yeah, this is my favorite Chris bullshit answer. <laughs> <laughs> We've been cabotaged. The, the thing is that there so are so sad. many stories of people relying on Google Maps or whatever and like not actually looking where they're going and actually driving into uh, lakes or like driving off the road in some weird back road and then getting st- like there was, there was a truck driver uh, a couple years ago, I think. Uh, who was making his run and like was using Google Maps and trying to do a shortcut. And he ended up on this, and it was snowing, and he ended up on this like dirt road where nothing had plowed and getting stuck for like five days or something um, because like you, because of stuff like that. So yeah. like, like it's not, it's, it's just this side of unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It is. Yeah. 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 And that's um, this podcast as a, to sum up. <laughs> just this side. Just this side, side of, of unbelievable. <laughs> wow, I like that actually as a slogan. <laughs> I might add that to my Twitter profile. When I Binary jazz, that. just this side of unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to co-opt it and use it to describe myself. Just and Gary. Just Binary <laughs> Gary, just this side <laughs> of unbelievable. Um, speaking of GPS, so I grew up in the flatlands of Florida. Uh, and there are very few roads in Florida that, I shouldn't say this, generally, very few roads in Florida are curvy, like maybe in neighborhoods, but they're all straight and gritty, you know? I think I know so what like, you mean, but it sounds so bizarre. <laughs> um, yeah, so coming up here, like, there's hills and things, and so there are very yeah. few roads that are actually straight. Other and places have have. Curves. So in my head, I cannot establish a grid because I have in my head, well, that road goes north. But this other road goes north. But they cross each other. How are they both? How are they parallel if they cross? And it's, um, it is, uh, it's fun to uh, get lost on my way back from the home repair store. So, so Utah, <laughs> and and well, Salt Lake City in particular. Most most Utah cities are built on a grid, and the grid extends from the temple, uh, because that is the center of all things, right? Uh, Salt Lake City and the some of the surrounding uh, like burbs, I guess, um, are like that except when they're not. And when they're yes. not, it's it really throws you for a loop because because That's what I you, discovered when I was driving there <laughs> because like... everything else is on a grid. So like you expect everything to be on the grid, and then you find yourself on this weird diagonally running uh, street that goes who the hell knows where because it's not on the grid; it's doing something else. And there's like yeah. neighborhoods that like have a grid, but the grid is different. Uh, it's like the, the grid is yeah, like the grid is like shifted in yeah. a weird way. <laughs> Fifteen degree, yeah, yeah. <laughs> When I was driving there, I'm like, okay, I got this grid, like I can handle it. And then all of a sudden, you turn a left and be like, um. I'm not pointing the direction I should be pointing in. Like, <laughs> how did that happen? Yeah. the the big thing The big thing that I had to learn uh, moving here was um, like 
the way the name the streets are named is very logical but it is extremely difficult i think for people who are not from here to uh have them work in their brain because like for instance we live right next to a street uh basically on the street except our street kind of like does a weird thing but we'll, we'll say that i live on 200 west okay and there is another street the sort of the cross street that is 700 north so on a grid you can see you can see okay 200 west 700 north it's right there that's where the pin drop is right 200 west and all west streets go north to south yes so when you are driving on 200 west you're going north or south north or south yes and when you are driving on on 700 north you're driving east to west because it was 700 gallops north of the city center <laughs> that east west street um and and so obviously there's a 300 west and a 400 west and a 500 west and etc 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 which yeah. all extend west which makes sense when you're looking at a map and then there's the east ones there's like you know 200 east 300 east 400 east they all go east and then there's you know 700 north 800 north nine so those all go north and the south and whatever and they all extend out and so on a map it makes sense like okay those those numbers get bigger the further south you get until they don't because now you're in another city with another temple and now we reset so now everything you've gone from 1200 right you've gone from south, south to north to 900 north yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Except it's usually something it. like it's usually something like 121. Uh, it's hun, uh, I guess it would be 12,100 south or something, and then at that point it changes into like 5,000 north. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but like driving the streets, it's like well, wait, why am I turning onto onto north when I want to go east? And like or, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it it just like your brain is like. <clears throat> And it shouldn't My be that brain. hard. It shouldn't be that hard. But I totally commiserate with, with people coming in from other places and be like, what the hell? Yeah, why? <laughs> this makes no I sense. And actually, it makes a lot of sense. But like, it doesn't make sense if that is not the logic that you are familiar with. No. I'm on and a, that is cabotage. I'm on Southwest, uh, but there's no other version of it. So <laughs> like the whole length of it, is Avenue Southwest. Avenue Southwest. Yeah. But maybe yeah, they were just like thinking big. They were like, look, we want. It's really interesting because it is off of, like I'm like a quarter mile from the historic district. So there's some very old houses here. And ours is relatively new at 68 years, you know? And, um, so it's, it's fun to like walk and be like, how are these streets designed? There's the main road, Union, and then parallel to Union, like a block away is Spring. And a road that comes from Union may hit Spring and cross, but it doesn't actually cross like at 90 degrees, like hmm. Miller ends here. And then 60 yards north is the rest of Miller. So I like what, I don't know. I mean, was that just the way people like walked into town or like what was... You know, like how, how did that happen and why? And so we live, I was like, was there a tectonic shift right in the middle of the street? I'm like, <laughs> probably not, but I like that mental image. <laughs> uh, we live in a neighborhood that has been sort of reclaimed, uh, renamed to, as Marmalade, the Marmalade District. Oh, uh, that's cute. Which is named because this part of town, historically, there were lots of like fruit trees and groves and stuff. And so there's like, uh, very, a lot of the street names are, are based on uh, like various different fruits. Um, and the street that we are technically on is Wall Street, which does a weird thing. We're, we, are, we break the grid uh, because ours like sort of does this weird curvy thing and then it goes up at an angle. And it does that because... Uh, Sorry. <laughs> it, it does that... Cavitage! Sends me, I don't know what to do. <laughs> It goes up at a weird angle and, and curves because there used to actually be a physical wall uh, on this street that was to keep the Native Americans uh, away uh, away from attacking the the city capital. Yeah, don't want to let them into the temple or state capital. I guess it is the state capital. Yeah, not city capital. Why did I say so we're we're at the point in the show where we ask, what does this word mean? 
Uh, typically, yeah. Or do we or. want to take final guesses? Uh, I like, I'm still I, sticking with a leafy vegetable. Yeah, I mean, you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> this whole Chris? time, you've been, you've been mispronouncing cabbage. That's the <laughs> one. How <laughs> embarrassing <laughs> would that be? Wait, say it again? Cabotage. Are you serious? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's cabotage. Um, oh, it's a fancy cabbage. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, there it is. Uh, I, I'm sticking with my, I'm sticking with my cabotage, uh, sabotaging cab drivers is, is definitely yeah. what cabotage should be. Um, okay. I feel like the real meaning is boring. It's less interesting than, than. It always movie. is though. Um, yeah. cabotage is the transport of goods or passengers between two places in the same country. No, it's not. Yeah. Really? No, it's not. It's totally sabotaging a cab driver. That's that's <laughs> that's just we're just denying reality. That's not the and specifically definition. in the same country though, is the call I believe so, yes. Wow. So it's it used to be just like port to port, but now it also applies to like planes, trains, automobiles. <laughs> so like domestic carriers like uh, Southwest Airlines provide cabotage. That yes. Reason that correct, understanding that correctly? Yeah. Neat. And some, like, it's basically now it's used to, like, be, like, instigating laws and stuff, but it's basically, like, the right to operate those transports within a certain territory. Wow. How, how did this word occur? Yeah, um, I mean, it's a good for question. you, not, like, in, like, the... Oh, I was just, like, I think it's, the origin is French. <laughs> Um, that's a good question. I was reading something and they were talking about Canadian cabotage and I didn't know what that meant. Mm. I was thinking it was something like portage, like when people take canoes or kayaks and like, yeah. um, but that wasn't it. I mean, it was kind of it because I guess the origin of it is from a French word that means to travel by coast. So maybe there's some connection there, but. So it's pronounced port, port, say it again, portage? Oh, portage is... Yeah. Wind, I always like, thought it was portage, because oh. I read it and never heard it pronounced. I've, so it's I've, yeah, I, that, yes. Which makes sense. You said portage, and that made sense, because I know I've seen that word in my life. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe I've never, <laughs> never seen portage, but I have seen portage. Portage. As a, as a um, Boy Scout, I thought I would do quite a bit more portaging than I've ever had to do in my life. It seemed to be a recurring theme of something I needed to know how to do, and I've probably done it a single time in my life to earn a merit badge. So, it's, I mean, depending on how outdoorsy you are, it's relatively common around here if you go up to like cottages or go hiking or camping and stuff. Like, I have a friend who does like a family portage trip every year, which she has a very large family, so it's probably a lot more fun if you have more people, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't think we have any Allison questions this week, unless I no. submitted some in my sleep. No, we we don't have any questions. We don't even have we don't even have junk questions. Oh, what are we no. gonna do? Oh, well, I will uh, roll back to um, my distraction before we had the topic, then, because I have thoughts. Thoughts uh, on Chris's Eric, al yeah on your alternate thoughts. timeline. <laughs> oh, yeah. on, on alternate. Chris. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. So I'd like to play this out a little bit. Uh, just because I'm curious. So like alternate Chris, mm -hmm. um, I, I cert well, I certainly think that the impact of your partner uh, has sent you on a, on the, on a vector, right? Mm -hmm. I think I would also argue that you were, you were discounting your own impact on others. So were you have to have taken the alternate timeline, I think in your head you can be like, oh, I know those people and the effect they had on me. And I would expect that the, the following dot, dot, dot would happen. But I think the part that you're not able to adequately identify is in turn the effect you would have on them. And that's what makes that whole area super gray. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think it would be worse timeline. I think that it would be, it, it would, it, if, if we say that the scale is like bad is down and good is up and you're thinking, well, it was going to vector down. Like, I, I think it's going to vector higher than you expect and possibly up. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. I the the stuff that I stopped doing 
after I was in a much less healthy headspace generally about people and relationships and uh, sex uh, at the time that then became more healthy with the inclusion of a stable relationship with a person that was mostly together. Um, sure. And I feel like I would have been more immersed, like even like I anticipate that uh, if I went down that path, I still would have uh, no longer been in the relationship that I had been right before Aaron. Um, we still would have blown up. Um, but I feel like my response to that would not be to be seeking out healthier relationships. It would be to uh, probably, I mean, and I'm probably being really negative on myself, but I, I, my, in my head, I go down a darker path of like more self-destructive behavior and more like, like sure. self-destructive relationships and, and things like that um before it like before it turns up um just because the people that were in that scene um the people that i was associating with like what that pool looked like at the time uh and where my headspace would be going into it um but i but i think that you can only i think you can only observe that in the very short term from that point sure yeah when that relationship sure ended, like you can point, say like well i think that there would be this immediate but there's so many variables that are constantly Here's, here's another take on it. Like, but it would be a very different version of Chris. <laughs> I like to picture like dark- yeah, Far Garther. Like an eye patch. Far, like, far Gother Chris. And like yeah. a, a dark, <laughs> like derby hat, like a black derby hat. Just pure um, steampunk all of a sudden. <laughs> Ron, Ron and I somewhat, I don't know. We, we sort of had this conversation in the kitchen last night as we were, as I was, grabbing a beer and making popcorn and she was coming in for, for more wine or something. Um, like if you had asked me where things would be in the world like a year ago, right? Like I felt like I was in a very stable, you know, trajectory and, um, and holy shit, like not even close to correct. Like, <laughs> In addition to like the absolute mayhem of the world uh, and a global pandemic and um, and social unrest being egged on by by militarized police and and I mean just a baffling uh, president uh, <laughs> shitbag and um, and it, like beyond that you know like I don't know um, I was expecting in August you know things I would be still looking out my window and excited about that tree that, that was planted and you know I was expecting in November I mean that was my big change was going to be a tree outside my office window um, so you know like it's uh it, it's it's wild to think of, like how um unstable everything really is mm -hmm. and at the same time like the actual stability of uh, humans in the midst of that instability. So while everything's blowing up, like, yeah, I mean, Rhonda and I are like where we've been, which is cool. Uh, even though there's like times where we're like, the oh, fuck, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it, it, so there's, there's, I don't know. I mean, like the, there's like these parallel things that are happening and some are unstable and some are stable and, and it's hard to, it's hard to make blanket observations and understandings about, about myself in the midst of that because mm -hmm. it's hard to see where you are. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.